Hello. Thank you for uh, joining us in this Agora talk. Uh, we hope that it will be a very interesting discussion because we already did a very interesting Zoom and uh, we know that uh, this uh, discussion concerns a lot of people. And uh, with us today, let me introduce to you Jenny Koski. She's the director, the new director of uh, EVA, European Women Association. Uh, Vasiliki Diagouma from uh, ECOME. Anna Kasimati from uh, Media Desk uh, Greece. And uh, we are very happy to have with us Kayo Pilikovardi from uh, the Greek Ombudsman, and she will help us with uh, the law and uh, where to address to in case of uh, problems. Uh, so, Jenny, would you like to start? Yes, thank you. Um, all right, so <laughs> I had the pleasure to give the introduction to this topic. Um, so, according to recent research, cultural and creative sectors are hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. In Europe, tens of thousands of artists and cultural workers have profoundly been impacted and their working conditions have become even more pre precarious, as in their professional world they are subjected to high degree of informal and untypical working conditions, such as independent contracting, freelancing and self and other self-employment. According to the report by International Labour Organization, fewer women than men will recover employment after COVID-19. According to the same report, work-related harassment and gender-based violence worsened during the pandemic, further undermining women's capacity and ability to access fair employment in the future. So it is actually important to remember that even before COVID-19, there was a significant gap in access to work by women, not to mention by people representing any minority groups in the arts and creative sectors. Furthermore, due to COVID-19, that gap has significantly deepened and will exist in the uh, years to come because despite uh, all the elaborate talk of the recognition of the systemic and structural power imbalance, there has still been very few actions and measures to actually change it. So now more than ever, it is no longer enough to just talk about it and condemn the abuse of power. We need concrete actions and measures to eradicate it for a fairer and sustainable future. Thank you. So um, we have just highlighted here a couple of different um, definitions of what workplace injustice is. And we all know, of course, the Me Too movement um, and other consequent national and regional measures to combat, combat workplace injustice in general. But even after these years, we are yet to see a sustainable change that would enable more fair and safer workplace for everyone. Uh, as the new director of uh, European Women's Audiovisual Network, our strategy is to engage in a sustainable agenda to bring forth and offer tools and consultation for anyone wanting to change the status quo and build an industry that is based on value systems and value chains that promote the well-being and equity of its workers. We need to commit to transparent, ethical and just leadership to create a change that is needed. We cannot continue with the way we have so far. At EVA Network, we believe there is an ever more pressing need to build a fairer future at workplace with gender equality in the core of a strategy of any organization for sustainable change. We believe that this strategy has to be implemented in the core of the activities by all organizations, all individuals and stakeholders within our industries. As is the case with climate change, this actually affects us all. So with this Agora talk today, we urge us all to engage in this work together and find ways in which to build openly shared tools, measures, 
from the grassroots level to the higher level of positions of power that openly, ethically, and transparently build and promote an infrastructure for just and safer employment for everyone. Thank you. Hi. Um, first of all, uh, many thanks to the festival. Many thanks to the Agora, to Jana, to Jenny, Anna, Calliope, everyone who is here with us today. Why are we discussing this issue? This is a topic of discussion for everyone, and we are all mutually burdened with this responsibility to discuss and take action. And as we are gradually emerging from our safe digital work environment that was imposed to us so abruptly by COVID, we realize that we are exposed in a very unsafe and even more toxic environment, whether in our workplace or in society. Human interaction has changed. And it is our responsibility not just to realize it very fast, but to take action and help all individuals, women and men, face the hardship of harassment, violence, hatred in our workplace. The issue of supporting um, a safe workplace, especially for women in the creative industries, in the audiovisual sector, is very important to ECOME. And we're targeting this situation by understanding that there are two very important elements when we are discussing equality in the workplace that affect what we do. Number one is growth. How do you secure equal access for everyone in the work field? You have to invest in the growth of the sector. You have to be able to provide an environment where junior professionals will enter without discrimination, that will be, they will be able to thrive because work conditions and competition are there with healthy standards. So by investing in growth, by attracting investment, by creating an environment where people can actually bring their project and become a successful professional, you take a first step. But while you're doing this, you also have to invest in the people. And investing in people means that you work with education and you start at a very early age. So at ECOME, we, we understand that when we start working with very young people at a very early age, say at the age of four, five, six years old, by investing in media literacy programs and by helping young people understand the value of the audiovisual production, we have a very open space to discuss with people, with youth, with parents, about the values of what we're doing right now. And this is a very lengthy process, but we see it in every step along the way. We continue with junior professionals, with students, with people who will enter the workplace. And then we discuss with professionals that are equally important to us when we collaborate for educational programs that will reskill them. And then we understand that what we're doing right now is the core of our discussion in every activity that we have. So for us, for myself, for, for ECOME, and for the people who collaborate in this world that we understand as a very creative world, but a very tough world to survive as a professional, we see that by understanding that these are very hostile times for human beings, but at the same time, the more sensitive uh, people, the more sensitive groups in this work environment can be very much protected if we take action, if we rely on institutions, institutional change, if we rely on, 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 on voices of networks, if we rely on the work of, uh, of, of stakeholders, such as a film festival, or such as uh, film centers and institutions that will 
be there to service the needs of professionals, then we have a very valid position in the discussion to help. As we go along, we will be able to focus more on uh, definitions and, and practices. But for the time being, my personal opinion, but my shared also opinion with my, with my colleagues is that in order to support individuals and stop harassment, we have to be able to work even closer and defy boundaries and not be afraid in the post-COVID era. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Very interesting, your um, positions in uh, everything. Um, I have to make a small note. I, I will not follow in my presentation the PowerPoint. I, I just thought to put some information there but that I found interesting and uh, useful. So, uh, approximately one-fourth of uh, employees are uh, affected uh, in one way or another by worker bullying. In our industry, the Me Too debate uh, um, publicly demonstrated how this uh, harassment and uh, bullying can destroy on personal level uh, individuals and in also in a group uh, level can create a crisis. Uh, bullying is not uh, only uh, limited in uh, specific work environments or uh, in specific territories. Actually, recently, um, there were uh, a number of high-profile cases um, about bullying in, um, in the sector in the uh, UK uh, for, um, sorry, I, I forgot the word, uh, in, at the charity sector. Uh, very well-known organizations such as uh, UNICEF and uh, Oxfam uh, were um, found that were guilty of bullying. And actually, in April 2021, uh, Oxfam uh, was uh, uh, sustained from uh, having uh, opportunity to be financially helped by the government. So, um, in uh, Greece, maybe because of uh, Sometimes of uh, moral uh, relatives, we say that uh, uh, there is fault in both sides or that it's uh, never one fault. With uh, bullying, this is not the case. In many times, there is uh, one's fault. Uh, there are cases that bullying starts from one person and it can be stopped uh, again, thank God, from one person. So that's why in my presentation, I focus on the duties and the responsibilities that uh, team leaders have, that directors have, uh, that the head of departments have uh, uh, to help uh, to eliminate this phenomenon. Um, because uh, leaders have, uh, are great enhancers, they can uh, contribute to a work climate that it will be more fair and uh, more healthy for everyone. So, of course, they have to face some obstacles. The first one is that, that in our industry also, uh, we are very dependent from uh, freelance uh, workforce and uh, casual workforce. Uh, usually movie sets are uh, very stressful and uh, tough environments. And uh, finally, there is also a workforce that changes a lot. So when something bad happens, it's not always clear where to go and uh, who ha has to do something. Additionally, um, bullying is different from harassment. Harassment has, uh, uh, is a legal term and uh, it has been incorporated uh, in the uh, employment law, uh, while bullying is more in a gray area. Third, we are in a period of crisis. It's not only the financial crisis that we had to deal many years now. It, it is not only the pandemic. Sometimes even uh, positive things like um, the technological advancement, uh, teleworking, bring people to feel uh, a little bit uh, insecure and uh, they respond uh, in a hostile and uh, not appropriate matter. Last but not least, again in our industry, it's not uncommon for uh, people 
to become directors or um, managers, not because they want to manage people uh, or because they are trained to do so. Uh, usually they are uh, very talented in uh, an art field or they curate a specific um, art activity and uh, they are good at it, so they become directors. And this is a little bit problematic. But uh, we all know that... Let me change that. Uh, we all know that uh, bullying is something that has to change, so there are some uh, ways that uh, leaders could uh, help more straightforward and uh, more direct uh, in that um, direction. Um, as usually some countries are more uh, forward than others in how to deal with bullying. In our case, uh, in the um, UK, the British Film Institute uh, parted with uh, BAFTA and uh, along with some other partners of the industry, and they have uh, created a very practical guide of uh, how to reduce harassment and uh, bullying and uh, racism in the screen uh, industries. And these are some of their tips that they uh, said that it will be useful for heads of department and team uh, leaders. Uh, but apart from these uh, five tips, uh, we, we can also advise uh, leaders to, to think uh, in how to create teams within an organization, to remember always to involve the new employees and the new members, um, because uh, in our uh, work, uh, we don't do always things in the same way. Although projects are similar, sometimes we do it in a way and sometimes we do it in another way. So it is important to keep the flow of information open for everyone. And uh, third, they have to create, uh, when someone, they have to create a safe environment and when an employee uh, makes uh, a report, they have to act immediately. So, to conclude, for uh, team leaders, in order to prevent bullying, uh, they have to be quickly respond to every report. Uh, they have to have clear directions for everything that has to be done. And uh, they have also to keep a very constant uh, reaction to everyone that is involved in a situation. Um, Lastly, I would like to say that um, for, um, for, for everyone, uh, it is very important to be in a, an environment that is safe. Although there is a greater level of awareness uh, and during uh, the last uh, years, uh, art managers and uh, public bodies are still have, have a long way to go to secure a way of um, being everybody feeling sec uh, good in uh, their environment. Uh, so, I know that there are some legal also, be maybe it's better not to have to come to, uh, to your organization to deal with a, a problem like that. Uh, maybe if uh, leaders uh, decide to be more forward uh, and uh, more uh, quick in uh, responding to situations like that, but then if nothing like that happens, we can come to you. <laughs> Many thanks for the bridge. <laughs> um, I would like to, to thank institutionally and personally for the invitation here. I'm uh, very happy and honored to participate in, uh, in an event like uh, this one, we're not used to. Uh, so uh, I think that it is a challenge for uh, the institution. And uh, I hope that this will lead to a more close cooperation in the future. So let's see it as a beginning of uh, a more closer cooperation. Uh, the Greek Ombudsman has a specific role on harassment in the workplace, and this is the reason why I'm here uh, with you. Uh, I will not uh, go into the details of the legal definitions, 
but I'm sure that you all know what uh, harassment is. Even if you do not know the legal definition, you can all have possible the experience or you have shared the experience with someone who had this kind of uh, uh, behavior. Uh, we can just, okay. uh, I will just stay, you can see the, the definitions uh, there. I will just say, uh, stay uh, in the key elements of uh, this uh, behavior and I will talk about uh, harassment mainly. The key word is the unwanted or the unwelcome, as Jenny had in, uh, in the definitions. Uh, this is the, the, the key word, because uh, some people say, okay, we cannot uh, even flirt in our work. This is not possible. We're not liberal, we're not, uh, liberal persons anymore. We have to think of everything, on how we pronounce a word, on how we can express our feelings. This is not exactly the case. Of course, if it is wanted, there is no problem. And the other key element in the, in the definition is the fact that it is behind the purpose of someone who is ha having this behavior or this conduct. It is actually the results the, the result that matters. So we want to have an unwelcome uh, behavior or act, and we have to have also, as a result, the insult or the hostile environment or humiliating or insulting, etc. Uh, thank you, Jenny. <laughs> when it comes to the competent bodies, uh, I will stay to the, to the remark that uh, Anna uh, had made, uh, and it is related to the culture of, his, of each company or of each institution. And yes, this is very important to have uh, the, the heads and the directors to have a leading role in this regard. Because the important thing is to change the culture, the work culture. And of course, the directors has this key role on, on their hands. But beyond that, uh, when things come to file a complaint, you have to, to know the competent bodies. And it is true that we are not sure in Greece who is competent and for what. I will just say one very clear word. In case that you do not know, that you have doubts on who is competent, just send a request to the Ombudsman and we will provide the necessary information. In principle, just uh, keep in mind that the Ombudsman is competent on specific grounds of discrimination and harassment is a form of discrimination. So uh, the Ombudsman is competent on gender equality, uh, on, ras on, on discrimination on the grounds of racial or uh, ethnic origin, on uh, religious or other beliefs, on age, on sexual orientation, on family or social status, on uh, disability, and on gender identity or, uh, gender or sex characteristics. So in case that you are harassed because of one of these specific characteristics, you, ha characteristic, you have to file a complaint to the Ombudsman. In case that the harassment that you have faced is not related to one of these grounds, you can go to the labor inspectorate body when you work in the private sector. When you work in the public sector, uh, you have to make a complaint on your service, on your, on your um, supervisor, and the supervisor has to deal with the complaint. In case that there are problems in this field, you can uh, file a complaint to the ombudsman. So, the um, here. what the Ombudsman can do? In any case, we can assist you with specific advice on where to go on or on where to bring us in order to investigate further the case. Uh, we can ask the competent authorities for disciplinary measures or we can send the case to the prosecutor in case that there are uh, specific uh, characteristics and important uh, uh, complaints. Uh, 
in this regard, we can monitor the, the, the disciplinary uh, procedure and the final findings in case that we can, in case that we see that um, the disciplinary uh, body uh, has not undertaken seriously the complaint, we can come again and we can uh, ask to reconsider and to make it again and again and again, stressing the specific uh, things that were not investigated. Um, but actually, the Ombudsman has also a, a role to play in making a reconciliation procedure, in trying to to make the parts uh, find a way to uh, be together again uh, with, the respect, with the necessary respect in the work uh, relations. Uh, in the private sector, uh, even we, in case that the labor inspectorate receives a complaint related to harassment, for instance, in the, or to sexual harassment, for instance, uh, the body is obliged to send the case to the ombudsman and the ombudsman is, uh, can participate, is invited to participate to the, um, to the dispute. So a representative from the part of the ombudsman is taking, is, is taking uh, participates actively in this uh, dispute and can recommend specific actions or, in case that uh, there is no way to find a reconciliation, then the Ombudsman can uh, suggest the imposition of specific sanctions. And the Labor Inspectorate body is obliged to impose these sanctions. Uh, during the investigation, the, the Ombudsman has specific powers, and we can uh, examine witnesses in witness in, in, our, in our offices, we can contact on spot investigation, we can request do, uh, documents for private or public uh, institutions or individuals. And the important institutional uh, uh, tool is the shift of the burden of, of proof. What does it mean? In such cases where discrimination exists, uh, it is in the workplace, it is well known that the the, um, the party of the, the, emplo the employee is not in the uh, position of power. On the contrary, it is the employer who has this power, and of course, is more close to to the, to the evidence to prove that this did not happen. So the legislation provides specific tools in order to facilitate the employee to prove that there has been uh, happened uh, specific uh, harassment or uh, some sort of discrimination. Uh, I would like to stress here that the Ombudsman cannot represent a victim to the courts and does not grant compensation. Just to be clear on that. And uh, in, in addition, the Ombudsman does not uh, have binding decisions for the uh, individuals or the public authorities, but it has a power to, to persuade. Uh, so specific practical um, information and advice for, for possible victims of discrimination or harassment is to try to have specific evidence. To, to have specific proof. So it is important in cases of harassment to collect what you have in writing. If you have a message, if you have uh, a note, if you have uh, something um, in, a, in a camera, something from the camera that you can have this kind of evidence. It is very important, of course, it is very clear. It is also important to keep a journal of relevant facts, what happened every day or what happened, what were exactly the incidents and when. And also to keep specific contacts of the witnesses. Um, trying to make some kind of conclusions, uh, I would like to say that um, it is true that it, there is lack of adequate information uh, widespread. Uh, 
persons, people in the workplace do not know where to go. And this is um, a responsibility that we have as ombudsmen uh, from our part to make it more known, well known. Um, on the other hand, what we see in, in, in relevant cases is that people are afraid, mainly women. We have sexual harassment mostly. Uh, they are very, um, uh, there is a heavy emotional and financial burden, and uh, in, in many cases, uh, there are women who recall their complaint in fear of uh, the pressure uh, of the family, of the environment, uh, etc. Uh, in addition, as I said, there are difficulties in the, uh, in the procedure of proof uh, the harassment. Um, to our experience, a pre-existing code of conduct, it is important to, to be in, in every company, in every uh, work, because actually everyone knows where to go and everyone has specific direction on what to do, even if he or she is the director, uh, he knows, she knows where, what to do. Because sometimes uh, there is, um, people do not know what to do with a complaint like that. Like that. So even the directors have to have specific directions and it is important for this reason to have a code of conduct because actually it is a way to change the culture and it is a way to change our minds. And if it is well known for everyone, this approach, I think that things will become better in, uh, in practice. It is necessary to have more promotional activities, but apart from the promotional activities, I would like to stress the impact that the Me Too movement had in this, on these issues. I can assure you that the last months, uh, the, the institution receives uh, complaints on sexual harassment, more complaints on sexual harassment. Uh, when it comes to numbers, I, would, uh, I could say that annually we received in the past about 20 uh, complaints per, uh, per year, uh, annually. So uh, this is not, of course, enough, and this is not in, in relevance to what is going on in, in the real world. Uh, so we see this increase in, in the complaints, but on the other hand, uh, I would like to stress, because we are here, the fact that even though the Me Too movement started from um, uh, the audiovisual uh, sector, uh, we do not receive very the, the, the complaints that we, that we receive and are related to uh, harassment in, in the workplace, uh, in uh, theater or uh, cinema, is very limited. And they are still limited. So you have to find out what is the reason why you receive complaints. And it is something that we have to go further on on that. Um, I would like to finish saying that um, it is a difficult uh, issue to deal with, but uh, I'm not, uh, I, I think that things are going better. And uh, even though the, um, the progress uh, is not still what we wanted to have, I think that something has started to change and uh, we will see the progress in the, in, in the next years to come. And uh, we are here to help through our institutional role and uh, to, to keep, um, I think that what Jenny said, it's actually this uh, event, a call for action. Uh, let's do this call. Uh, an action for uh, everyone of us, from the personal, the institutional, the um, work uh, that every one of us is doing. Thank you very much, again. Thank you. That was uh, really useful because in a situation like that, it's, uh, it's very important to know where to go.
to ask uh, to ask for help. And also another thing that uh, we must discuss is how do you recognize that uh, you are a bullying victim? Because sometimes, especially when you're young and you're a young professional, uh, you have doubts. Perhaps you, all, you may blame yourself for something. And uh, there are many cases that uh, many years must pass and then you can realize that that was a bullying. Uh, so, would you like to share? Yes. Uh, the bullying, I didn't say it before, um, is actually what characterizes bullying is the fact that it is a repetitive action, a behavior that is, has a continuity, is there again and again. Um, Commenting on that, uh, I want to, to say that um, even though we have uh, a legal definition for harassment, we do not have the, the same for bullying. We know exactly what it is, but it is not a strict legal definition for bullying. Uh, that has something to say. Uh, the recent uh, law uh, in 2021 uh, has changed a little bit this legal approach to, to things. Uh, but as regards bullying, and due to the fact that bullying is mainly, of course there is uh, bullying in work, but uh, there is bullying in education. Um, and the important thing there, I think, is to try to change um, the attitudes and, and, and the cultures. Um, and Sometimes it is not an issue of sanctions. And I do remember a case we had uh, several years before in a school where uh, a trans uh, pupil was not accepted by other pupils. And of course, uh, there were also problems with the teachers. And, and so we, we had to go there and to discuss with the children and to discuss with the, uh, um, with the teachers. Uh, and to try to make this kind of work. It was not actually the sanction that would solve or the, the problem there. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether a sanction in a case like that could have been effective in order to reach what we want to reach. Uh, well... To create a safe place, it's not always easy, especially in uh, large corporations, because uh, the world is very competitive, and uh, I think that the importance of uh, an HR department is always crucial to set boundaries. Would you like to...? There are many things that happen uh, when we work, and the issue of boundaries is a, is a crucial one. How do we set boundaries? How do we support boundaries? How do we respect boundaries? And how do we teach younger professionals about boundaries? And this is all related to the organizational structure and how do we approach it when we are encountering issues of um, um, bad behavior, whether bullying or harassment, and we cannot uh, override it through sanction. We cannot, we cannot tackle it by, by, by imposing a sanction because we know that this would create even bigger problems and it wouldn't solve the problem, basically. And the issue of boundaries is something that you, you can actually set by creating a regulation on work conduct. But in, in, in the individual world, when, when you work uh, in you know, very harsh conditions because you're on set and things are moving very fast, there is a psychological approach to the whole thing, which is also combined with the, the, the proper definition of the role that you have when you occupy a specific job um, position. 
And when, when, when people are ready to embrace that and when people respect that, but when they also have people who will point out that these are boundaries, no one can pass them, then you have a positive situation. Who does this for you? People that will help you enter this workplace and people who work in organizations that provide programs, educational programs, internships, scholarships, and when they meet you and you go through a selection process, you mentor them, you help them understand that when they enter a workplace, they will encounter situations and they have to be ready to react, not to expect something negative, but because this is a very competitive environment, they have to be able to understand that there are practices and behaviors that are allowed or not, that there are ways to communicate bad behaviors, that there are ways to communicate your own personal boundaries when you think that people are overstepping them, and that they shouldn't threaten your job or your, your, your ability to climb up you know, in hierarchy. So this is one scenario, and the other because we mentioned, you know, creating a, a change in, 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 in the cultural aspect of, 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 of what we do. It's not just about uh, the legal aspect, it's how we perceive this information. Because no matter how we, we work with institutions and, and governments to provide better, a better legislation for, for, for people who are potentially victims. If we do not understand that there has to be a cultural change and we are part of it, then th the whole legal system is, is, is not going to be able to support you. The Me Too movement, for example, provided um, a, a place, a community where people felt secure enough to join and, and express their agonies, their stories, their problems. And this was a community, a global, a global community. It, it, we had very, very important things happening in Greece. And we understand that if we are willing to help other people protect themselves, support one another, raise their voices, become better professionals and stronger professionals, then when we mentor them, when we educate them, when we train them, when we inform them, but especially when we use our voice to express their concerns, because we understand, because we have the experience, because we have our own personal experience, then we're helping them. We will never, I think, be able to solve the problem 100%, because this is our society, our global society. We, 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 we see that there are new, ru new rules and new laws, and yet again we encounter situations where human behavior is absolutely brutal. So, education, education, education. This is the most important thing. Yeah. Um, according to research, uh, usually bullying happens to employees that are uh, productive and uh, very well at their job. So at the beginning, they cannot realize why this, hap this is happening, and they make more efforts. And very gradually, they, they are victimized. So this is when more help is needed. And uh, the solution of an HR department is always the best, but it's not always feasible. Specifically in our sector, that um, it's um, comprised f with uh, medium or small scale companies. So that is why it's important to discuss about these matters and to get information and to know where to go um, because it's something that it happens and um, there are no magical solutions. So we need to know in case we are the victims of that, we need someone else to take the responsibility to help us or we need to know what to do. We need to have that knowledge, we need to have that information. Yes, I think it's, it's really important, especially if you work in a set, a movie set, 
that everything takes place in one month or two months, and then you get lost. If something happens, you must know how to, where to, to go to, what to do for the next job you will go into. Uh, so Jenny, regarding Eva, you are doing many very interesting things, one of which is to create a network for younger professionals so they can get into this competitive em environment. Can you tell us more about it? Well, actually, um, what I want to add, it's not only about the young people. We old people also have uh, many things to learn and unlearn. Um, I think we all recognize these issues at workplace and why we chose the topic of stop being a conformist. Um, and maybe this is the reason why you do not get a lot of um, uh, reports or um, applications is that we have a tendency of silence because we are afraid because when you come into the industry you have to start from zero you have to fight for your place women have to fight for their place even harder than men that's the truth that many research shows this so um, if we do not change this culture, if we do not stop and have a system in place, because it's, it's a scary position for anyone to you know, stand out and say, hang on, this is not right. But we see this over and over again in productions when things you know, don't always go as planned and we have extra long days, people are exhausted working, 12, 14 hours a day, non-stop, things happen. It ca doesn't have to be with sexual harassment. It can be just overlooking a safety issue like now recently in the United States. Um, it's a hazardous situation and the one who's responsible is the employer, which is usually a single human being or owner of a production company. So that's why we need to all of us have to take a stand and say, what is the value in our business? What kind of message do we want to deliver to anyone? Even if you're an intern who is starting or someone in their first job or the Oscar winner director who has followed a certain routine over and over again, you have to sit them down and say, look, this is how we operate here. And these are the rules we operate under. You, you have to, all of you have to follow this. We have to have constant meetings, safety, safety meetings, transparent meetings where we go through the issues that arise every single day. Otherwise, we will end up in this tip of the iceberg cases of Harvey Weinstein. It's like one individual who was a monster, but every single day, everything, anything can happen on a film set. On a, in film school or wherever, we, we have to take a stance and we have to know how to do it. And I think people are lacking these tools of how to say we need to stop and look at this and find a way how to deal with it so that we can continue into the future. So in many ways, yes, EVA Network is here. We are still also learning, but what we would like to do is to collaborate and share the, the knowledge that we have, share the tools that we have. And you know, we have been supported by public funders, so all of these should be freely available to ever, whoever needs it. So don't feel afraid of being in touch with us if you are a young filmmaker or if you're an institution. So we want to be there for you. Uh, are there any questions from uh, the audience? Would you like to, to add something? Um, just to say that um, actually the issue of harassment, of bullying, is an issue of safety and health in work. And uh, for this reason, I think that uh, the state, uh, the workers, the trade unions, everyone should have this kind of approach because it is not just uh, an issue of morality or of how we will be 
come in for in our work. It's an issue of safety and health. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, staying with us.